Our story is set in the thylakoid membrane of chloroplasts, where photosynthesis takes place. If you've been sleeping in your biology classes, photosynthesis is the process of harvesting light energy and reducing power from water into reduced electron carriers, and ATP, which is needed for the fixation of inorganic carbon into glucose. Photosystems, the molecular engines that drive photosynthesis, are embedded in thylakoid membranes. The first step in photosynthesis occurs in photosystem 2, which we will be focusing on in this video. Photosystem 2, or PS2, is made up of three main components. An antenna, that is a collection of pigments arranged for optimal energy transfer of light excitation energy. A reaction center, containing a special chlorophyll molecule called P680 that's responsible for oxidizing water and electron carriers. Our problematic protagonist, P680, always wants electrons with them to give away to electron carriers. When they're in a good mood, and weather permitting, they absorb light and enter an excited singlet state, where they function as normal, splitting water to replenish its own electron supply as it passes on its excited electrons to maintain the electron flow in photosynthesis. But when electron carriers around them become overwhelmed, they in turn can become impatient. If left alone in its singlet state for too long, P680 can interconvert into a triplet excited state. In this state, instead of waiting to take electrons from water, they then take electrons from molecular oxygen, resulting in the creation of a reactive oxygen species, or ROS. <laughs> ROS wreak havoc on photosynthetic machinery by reacting with important proteins and lipids, effectively inactivating photosystem 2. When photosystem 2 proteins are destroyed at a faster rate than they can be repaired, the plant loses photosynthetic productivity and enters a state of photoinhibition, where growth rates are severely reduced. To prevent the formation of ROS, plants have developed several photoprotective mechanisms. These mechanisms occur on varying scales from gene regulation to macroscopic physical changes. For example, plants can downregulate the expression of antenna proteins, reaction centers, and electron carriers to reduce the amount of energy being absorbed by their photosystems. Similarly, some higher plants can change the distribution of chloroplasts within cells, while others simply reduce the surface area exposed to light by changing the angles of their leaves. However, these mechanisms simply try to avoid light and are slow to occur. They aren't completely effective in protecting plants from sudden fluctuations in light and other stresses as seen in nature. So what happens when photosystems have already absorbed too much energy? This is where faster changes, like redirected electron flow and photosystem rearrangements for heat dissipation enters the story. These photoprotective mechanisms quench our problematic P680. One way to prevent P680 from producing toxic compounds is to redirect the electron flow within photosystem 2. This is called photochemical quenching because it involves electron flow through a series of redox reactions between electron carriers. There are several options for the redirection of electrons, but one that occurs within photosystem 2 is called reaction center 2 cyclic flow, or RC2 cyclic flow. In normal conditions, a reduced quinone would transfer its electrons to a mobile electron carrier called plastoquinone for electron transfer to photosystem 1. In RC2 cyclic flow, however, the reduced quinone transfers its electrons to P680 what? in the singlet excited state instead to re-reduce it to its ground state. This prevents the excited P680 from having a chance to convert into its triplet state and form ROS. Another way to appease P680 is to dissipate the energy it absorbed into thermal energy. This is called non-photochemical quenching because it does not involve electron flow. One kind of non-photochemical quenching involves keratinoids in the PS2 antenna called xanthophils, which are able to interact with triplet P680 to release its excess energy as heat. This cycle involves a series of deep oxidation reactions in response to pH changes in the thylakoid environment during photosynthesis. 
in normal conditions, viola xanthin in photosystem 2 functions as a light harvesting pigment. In highlight conditions, however, pH in the thylakoid lumen decreases as protons are pumped in by electron carriers in the membrane. This creates an acidic environment that activates an enzyme called viola xanthin deoxidase. Viola xanthin deoxidase removes epoxide groups from viola xanthin so that it is converted into anthroxanthin and ultimately to zeaxanthin. Zeaxanthin causes structural changes in the light harvesting complexes of photosystem 2 such that energy transfer to P680 is reduced and any excess energy is dissipated as heat. Zeaxanthin also has antioxidant properties and scavenges ROS within the thylakoid to protect against ROS damage. As light stresses are reduced, zeaxanthin is converted back to viola xanthin by viola xanthin epoxidase in the thylakoid stroma. So, let's recap. Photosystems are subject to many stressors like intense light. While important to photosynthesis, too much light can cause imbalances in photosystems resulting in damaging processes like the formation of toxic reactive oxygen species. In times when excess light absorption is unavoidable, plants have adopted photoprotective mechanisms to dissipate this energy and quench P680. Such mechanisms allow plants to rapidly respond to sudden fluctuations to stressors in their environment in order to survive. Thank you so much for watching our presentation. We hope you enjoyed and learned something.